Any volunteer to give us an opening prayer? Yes, Charity. Humble yourselves for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of parents, relatives, teachers, friends. Ask you that as you are going to have this lesson, may you give us knowledge and wisdom to understand what is going to be taught to us. May you give us good connection and good network. May you help us to attend this lesson fully and to gain from it. May you help us to be active and to participate. May you bless us as he teaches us. Bless us during this lesson. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Charity, for starting, the, starting off our lesson. Uh, somebody just remind me what we were discussing in our last topic, in our last lesson. Who recalls what we were di discussing in the last lesson? Daniela? Computer hardware. Computer hardware. We were discussing computer hardware and we say that the hardware components are majorly broken down into four or five components, or four, four or five categories. Any who can recall the categories? I know we must have been taking notes. Where, where we, we, people, we are supposed to be taking notes whenever we are in class. We are supposed to have notebooks to take note. And I actually put up the video of our last lesson in our Google Classroom. I put up a link which, is, which will direct you to YouTube in order to review in case you did not understand anything. Yes, Louise Kwagala. Um, one of the categories is input devices. Input devices, Naomi. Output devices. Output devices. Any other girls? Any other categories? Louise, you've already processing said devices. Pardon? Processing devices. Processing devices, then. Charity, you were part of my class last time. May I please hear from you? Ahoga Charity. Yes, teacher. Uh -huh. Maybe the other category. Okay, let me go help rescue you. Storage devices. Pardon? Storage devices. Storage devices. So we've talked about input processing, storage, and which is the other? Output. Output devices. But sometimes we now add a fifth one, which we call Somebody remind me. Naomi? Communication devices. Communication devices. So we, we have uh, all hardware components, all computer hardware components are categorized into input, processing, output, storage, and communication devices. Any component you come across that, is a, that, it must, that must be a part of the computer must lie in any of those four, must, must be part of any of those four categories. So we are now going to straight away go to a video to help us start off what we call input, input devices, and then we shall further discuss them at length. So I'm straight away sharing a video with us.
Welcome to exploring my computer channel. Watch videos on computer and solutions. Please stay connected by subscribing the channel for better informative videos. Computer is an high speed electronic computing and data processing device which takes inputs, processes it, and produces the output accordingly. It also store information in memory. This diagram shows basic operation flow on computer. That is input, processing and output. Common characteristics of a computer. Computer understands machine language that can't be understandable by human. Computer recognizes values in the forms of zeros or ones. Accuracy, repetitive task and tirelessness work. Computer hardware is physical components of a computer system. It is abbreviated as computer HW or HW. In short computer parts which can physically touch. Four categories. Input devices for raw data input. Processing devices to process raw data instructions into information. Output devices to disseminate data and information. Storage devices for data and information retention. Input Devices Keyboard It is the most popular and commonly used input device. It is just like a typewriter with additional keys for special purposes. Typing Keys Alphabet Keys A to Z and Number Keys 0 to 9 Function Keys 12 Function Keys Used for specific purposes. Control keys. These are cursor and screen control keys. Example, arrow keys. Page up, page down, control, alternate, escape, home, end, insert, and delete. Operator and special character keys. Special Purpose Keys Enter, Backspace, Num Lock, Caps Lock, Shift, Space Bar, Tab, Scroll Lock, Sleep, and Print Screen Numeric Keypad Quick and Easy Reference Keys Numbers, Arrow Keys, Operator Keys, etc. Mouse Popular Pointing, Selection and Cursor Control Device Microphone. It is used to recording sound, then stored in a digital form. Mainly used in multimedia works. Joystick is also a pointing device, which is used to move the cursor position on a screen. It is mainly used in games. Light pen is a pointing device similar to a pen, used to select a menu item or draw pictures on the screen. Scanner. It works like a photocopy or Xerox machine. It transfers information available on paper into digital format and stores it in computer memory. Barcode Reader It is used for reading barcoded data, data in the form of light and dark lines. Barcoded data is generally used in labeling items, numbering the books, etc. Optical Character Reader OCR. It is used to scan printed text optically and converts them into readable text and store it in a computer memory. Magnetic Ink Card Reader MICR. Micker is used in banks, where to read bank's code number and check number are printed on the checks with a special type of ink. Optical Mark Reader OMR. It is an optical scanner used to recognize the type of mark made by pen or pencil. It is specially used for checking the answer sheets of examinations having multiple choice questions. It does. We shall stop the video at that. Uh, 
because we want, now want to concentrate first on input hardware devices. Hardware input devices is what is where our discussion is going to be centered. We are mainly centering our discussion on input on hardware input devices. Remember, in our last lesson, we discussed, we said the, we discussed the input devices. We started off discussing the input devices and we all agreed that uh, they are, we said these are physical components of the computer used to feed the instructions or data into the computer for processing. And there are four major types of data entries. There are four major forms we input data into the computer. One, we can either that input data into a computer, we can input programs, commands, or user responses. Can somebody confirm we discussed this together? Yes, yes okay. we shall now move on. We, we gave ourselves the task and we, were, we listed some of the common input devices. And uh, most of these have been highlighted or emphasized in our video. Some of these have been highlighted or emphasized in our video. And uh, we are saying the input devices of the following are of the following categories. Even after categorizing the hardware devices, and when you talk about input devices, input devices are also further categorized into either pointing devices, keying in devices, scanning input devices, speech recognition, audio input, or multimedia input devices. Meaning that the moment you have a device that, you, that uses a pointer to input a signal, then you're, you're actually using a pointing device. If you're typing, in making entries by typing, then you're using a keying in device like a keyboard. If you're scanning, what for you to enter data, but you enter data through scanning, then you're using a scanning input device. If you're using speech, if you're speaking to your phone to make a call, then you're using what we call a speech recognition input device. And the same applies to audio and multimedia. The moment you're using pictures, or a device to input in form of video or image, then you're using what we call a multimedia input device. These are categories of input devices, not categories of hardware devices, but rather categories of input hardware devices. So we move to the, in, to the pointing devices in particular. We shall start with the pointing devices in particular. Pointing devices. Anybody to help us read pointing devices? Anybody to help us with pointing devices? I have a charity. Pointing devices, devices that are used to input data on commands into a computer system using a pointing mechanism that controls the movement of the pointer on the screen to select items. The user gives commands and responses by physical movements of the cursor like pointing, clicking, and dragging it. Good. For as long as you're going to input data and commands, into a computer using a pointing mechanism. That means you're using what we call a pointing device. Any examples of pointing devices with this have that we you, you visualized in the video that were highlighted in the video that you saw. Examples of pointing devices, Banis Arduino. Banis? A mouse. A mouse. mouse. Okay. Then uh Museveni. Janet, Janet, are you with us? Uh, 
uh, I'll, I'll move to Mueru Enjo pointing devices that have that you you saw in the video. Does this mean some people connect and leave us thereafter? Now, good, Jalilian. Any examples of pointing devices? Bernice. Touchpad. Touchpad. Uh, Sechirai. She had the same answer, but I never knew the name. Touchpad. Okay. Mm -hmm. You never knew the name. Uh, yes, I never knew the name. I just knew it's phone on a laptop. Phone. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the touchpad. True. Uh, yes, Rona. Uh, yes, Rona. Rona? Rona, your hand is up. Okay. A joystick. A joystick. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, we now move on. Those are some of the so those are some of the pointing devices that were highlighted in our video. For those who, who have come in late, you missed the first part of our lesson, which is normally the video. Queen Esther, you have your hand up. So it's a light pen, a pointing device. Exactly. A light pen is a pointing device. We are going to expound on more on to most of those. We're going to discuss more about them. I was saying some of you who have come in late, you've missed this, the first session of the lesson, which was a video to help us introduce or further understand computer hardware. But we are still going to discuss this. But remember to get back to our Google Classroom. You'll find the link to this particular lesson and you'll re rewind and see exactly what you missed. So we now move, with, with, move on to our pointing devices. I know we've seen such an icon or such a, a screen on a computer where we are using a pointing device. It, sometimes the, cast, the pointer will appear this way. And another time it will appear in form of a hand, depending on the situation or during processing. I'll then move to the next. In my, my annotation. Exam those are examples of pointing devices, typical examples of pointing devices. One is the mouse, joystick, trackball or trackpad, light pen, touchpad, stylus, and then digitizer. Any, any of these that we've not heard about before or that we've not seen before? Stylus. Stylus? Mm -hmm. Charity? Um, so I also just wanted to say that I've never seen a stylus. You've never seen a stylus. We're going to discuss it further. You actually you realize that you have seen it only that you probably did not know that that's the stylus. So keep this. Watch the space. We're going to discuss more all these at length, and we're going to understand where they are normally applied. The mouse is the most common input pointing input device. The joystick especially for those of you who, and who have little brothers or big brothers who play games at home. That game pad normally has a, 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 a joystick where they place the thumb to move the direction, determine the direction of movement. You have the track ball, you have the light pen, touch pad. Touch pad is typical of the laptops. Where in laptops do not, in most cases, don't come with a mouse, but the, what you use as to move the cursor is what we call the touch pad. The stylus we're going to discuss further, and then the digitizer normally used to input digital signatures into the computer. Angel Mueru says she cannot hear anything. Angel Mueru, 
Well, probably the problem is your your speakers. I don't know because she says she cannot hear anything, but I can see her microphone is just muted. That must be the, a challenge on, on your side, please, not our side. Let me respond to her. Okay. Here we are. We have a joystick right here. We have a joystick right here. We have a mouse and then a light pen used to write directly onto the screen so that we can be able to save what we have written. So that we can be able to save what we have written. Those are pictures, home images of the different pointing devices. We now have all this. Uh, we have a, a, a stylus. Uh, Daniela, you, your question was about and charity, I think. Your question was about a stylus. Do we know where, what a stylus is used for now? I can't see anything. I'm only seeing joystick. I can't see the stylus. Yeah. You can't see the stylus. Yeah, we are still seeing your screen of joystick, light pen, and the mouse. Is it now visible? No. Because I've moved no. to the next slide. Oh, my. No, screen okay, I can't, we, still, we are still on the joystick slide. Sorry, sorry, I had paused my screen sharing. So there we are. We have the stylus. Yes, now we can see. Use yes, a smartphone, a virtual keyboard on an iPad, a graphic tablet with a pen, and then the track the trackpad on a on an, on an Apple MacBook Pro. I hope we have we can now visualize and under, and try to understand what the stylus is used for. Normally, it's supposed to be kind of it. It's supposed to be a touch screen, but we can we cannot use our fingers or our hands are too big. You'll end up tapping three different buttons at the same time. So they make you a pen to make data entry very simple. You simply keep pointing on one by one, a button one by one. The screen size of this phone here is not the same screen size as that of the iPad or of the tablet, where I can use my big fingers to type. So the stylus is normally used for smaller screens to make, to make data entry. I hope I've, I'm, I've, I've answered the stylus people, the question about stylus. Yes. Okay. We shall then move on. We have a trackball, a gamepad, we have uh, somebody's using a light pen down here. We have a light, somebody using a light pen down here to write directly onto, to make a data, a data entry directly onto the screen. And then we have the touch screen. Some of us have smart TVs at home where we simply touch and, what, and make entries. We, we, most of us are using phones right now for lesson purposes. And what we are doing, we are simply touching and scrolling using our own hands. That is typical of what we call a touch screen. And normally, and because of the touch screen, the touch, as we move on, we shall talk about keyboard. Because of the touch screen, we shall end up discussing what we call a virtual keyboard. A virtual keyboard. But here we are still discussing pointing devices. We have the trackball, we have the gamepad, the light pen, and then this person is here is trying to make data entry using the hands. That's for the touch screen. 
Any questions so far? We are here to better understand no. hardware and in particular input devices for this lesson, for this particular lesson. Somebody give me permission to move on. Computer mouse. Uh, Audrey is going to read us that slide. I remember was Audrey. Audrey is taking tea. Okay. A computer mouse. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. We do hear you. The computer mouse. The computer mouse. This is a small handheld device pushed over a horizontal surface to control the coordinates of the cursor on the computer screen as the user moves it around on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. And as he or she clicks on the mouse, on the mouse's button. Okay. By show, of, by, by show of hands, has anybody never seen? Is there anybody who has never seen a mouse or never used a mouse? Are we have or at least each of us has had a chance to get into the computer lab and we have used the mouse before. We simply we are supposed to, we use it to move the cursor from one device from one position to another as a form of making entries for commands. So that is our mouse. That's a typical example of a mouse. Where where does it where where does it, it where does it pick its name? It's because it's in the shape of a mouse. A, a, a mouse eaten by a rat. So because it has a because this is the this looks like a mouse with a small tail and te technology has very little na naming vocabulary they say that is a mouse because it's in, in the shape of the actual living mouse that is eaten by a rat We shall move on to, we should, we should discuss this use to move as the insertion point from one location to another in a document, used to select the text on the document, point or select desired commands to activate a drop down arrow, used to confirm a command by clicking and used to activate appropriate menus. This is one of the most common input devices used by, that makes uh, learning computer usage or apply, applying computers in our daily life very easy. A mouse makes computer use very, very easy because anybody can move the cursor and they can click the, the two buttons, the right and left mouse buttons in order to enter or confirm a command. Once I get my mouse and click on the print button, it means I'm telling the computer to print my work. That way, I am feeding the computer with a command. Remember, if I if I may scroll back very fast, we say there are four types of input inputs. One, we input data, programs, commands, and user responses. And in most cases, a mouse is used to input. To, to input commands, to input commands, that's what, and to confirm them. That's what is the typical function of the mouse now while using the computer. So those, those are users of a computer mouse used to navigate the document when using a combination of, used to when used in combination with the scroll bar of the window and thereafter we move to what we call the joystick. The joystick. A volunteer to read us that slide. I want to have an interactive class. Uh, 
I'm going to put on Tasha Kemanzi. Kemanzi. Yes. Read us that slide, please. Joystick, an input device consisting of a stick that pivots on a base and reports its angle or direction to the device to the device it's controlling. Joysticks are often used to control video games. Joysticks are often used to control video games. Why? Because there is there is a an option of determining the direction of flow or the direction of movement. Especially, for example, if you're playing soccer, if you watch, if you're driving, you must determine the direction of movement of your of whatever you're trying to engage. So it's, the joystick is supposed to help us determine the angle or direction to the device it's controlling. And they are very common with video games. Uh, this is a typical example. That's a typical example. And they are naming the components of the joystick. One is the stick, two is the base, three is the trigger. So with our normal gamepad, you realize that we have, for example, if it's driving, you have the acceleration button, you have the returning button, you have the braking button, you have the reverse button. Now, this is also a, a different one, but for a different purpose. If you have watched a movie where somebody is in a plane and they are, they are shooting, this is kind of a typical handle they use. Has anybody ever watched a, a movie where there, there is a plane that is supposed to aim at, at a certain target to shoot? This is typically the joystick they use. This is the typical joystick that is put into applications. Actually, I had lost its network. Okay, our next input device is the keyboard. Our next input device is the keyboard. And I'll request, uh, I'll request Rihanna to read us that slide. Rihanna. The keyboard. The keyboard is a device that has a set of keys used to enter commands and characters into the computer system. Used to enter commands and characters into the computer system. The mouse will not be used to type, but it will be used to point and confirm commands or execute commands into the computer. But when it comes to the keyboard, that's where whenever you want to type anything, whenever you want to enter a command by typing, you will only be able to use the keyboard. And this was typically highlighted in our video. Once again, I re-echo this. If you came in a little late, we started with a video, and that video gave us a, a starting point to discuss what we call input hardware devices. This input, for this particular lesson, it's typically, it's particularly input hardware devices. So there are several keys which were still highlighted in our video. We have the alphabet keys, the function keys, the numeric keys, the arrow keys, and the command key, where we have the insert, delete home. When you click on a, on a, part, on a file and press the delete button, that is that you're commanding the computer to delete or to erase that file from your computer. When you, when you want to move up, you're telling the computer, I want to move to scroll up my document in a particular, depending on what I'm doing. Then the, see the sections of the alphanumeric, we have the alphanumeric keyboard, the function keys and the command, the main section. These still were highlighted and I would like to emphasize them in this next slide. That slide sh clearly shows us shows us the, this here, this here are what you call the alphabets, the 
Why do we call it an alphanumeric keyboard? It's because it caters for both alphabet and numbers. But what, what I have highlighted in red is are the alphabet. We have uh, the directional are the directional keys this side. We have other special keys, and we're going to realize that each of these key, the keyboards will carry will be designed based on the size of the device they are being utilized. If it's a laptop, we may not necessarily have the numeric keypad, but we'll use other num numbers up here that, has, that will play the role of what we call the numeric keypad. Otherwise, the numeric keypad is in this particular keyboard uh, hidden somewhere here at the end here. To go on, to go further, you will realize why, when we are using computers, we normally, when you're using a keyboard for data entry, you, we normally have what we call keyboard shortcuts. Instead of going to the mouse and then right click and then copy and then go to another side and paste, you can simply highlight and use the keyboard shortcut to either erase, to undo, to copy, to paste, and so on and so forth. These are some of the components that you always, that will, when you use a computer on a daily basis, that will become part of you. For example, when I press Control plus C, I'll be copying. When I, when I use, when I go to Control plus V, I'll be pasting. Control plus U, I'll be underlining. Let me open up a word document here. Or else, let me use this very one. Guys, I hope you can see my screen. For example, if I if I highlight this, I'll press the Control C button. I'll press the Control C, which means I've copied. And when I come to another screen here, I'll place my cursor there and press Control V. That means I'll have copied from one from one slide and pasted into the other. Control plus C is specifically for copying and control plus V is specifically meant for testing. These are keyboard shortcuts that we can always get used to when we put them to daily use whenever we are doing this. And please, and uh, we're going to, I'm going to request Mr. Luca to send us some practical assignment for us to submit through Google Classroom. I hope we have, we all have an account in that classroom. And uh, some of these, while doing these practicals, you must try it as much as possible to engage this particular keyboard shortcut in order to get acquainted with them. Applications of the keyboard used in char to key in characters, used to enter commands into the computer, used for numeric entries, and calculations and used to edit documents like using special keys. Now, I'm, I'm, I want to emphasize this. What you see on your screen is what we call a Braille keyboard. Has anybody ever heard about this? A Braille keyboard. A Braille keyboard. Has somebody ever come up? Yes, uh, uh, Bernice, you want, do you want to say something to us? Uh, no. no has, ever, uh, has anybody ever heard about a Braille keyboard? A Braille keyboard is the keyboard that is designed for the visually impaired. It's specifically designed for the visually impaired, meaning I cannot see but I want to use a computer. The moment I touch, you realize that the buttons, these buttons on a Braille keyboard have features that enable the blind to tell which character they are trying to deal with. 
So they, once they touch, they feel and can tell which key, which key they are trying to deal with. So it will be to make life simple for them when using or applying a computer. When using a computer to make any entries or using a keyboard, then it will be very, very simple. So that whenever, when somebody ever asks you about a Braille keyboard, the Braille keyboard has been specifically designed for the visually impaired, for the blind in short. Guys, do you know that the, somebody blind can tell how much money you have given them? Do, do, do we know that some, the, even the blind can tell how much money you have given them when they touch the money? Do we know that? No. Yes, there is a feature that is... No, yes. There is a feature that is integrated or that has yes. been embedded into the, the currency notes in order to cater for the blind to so that they are able to tell how much money they are, they are being given. I don't, for those of us, please ask mommy or daddy to show you. Uh, normally it's in form of a, a Roman, Roman numeral at the bottom left, bottom right, I think, of the currency note. But Tachira, you have your hand up. Daniela? Okay, Daniela's hand is up, so she's not responding. The hand was simply forgotten up. I wanted to ask, even when the note is old. Eh? Of, of course, if, 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 if it's very old, you may not Chef, be able can to you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. But I'm saying, if, if, the note, if the note is totally faded, if the note is totally faded, you may not be able to tell, just like if the note is so much faded, you, you, you as a person can also reject it because probably some of the digits are not very clear. But for a note that is a currency note that is uh, still fine, they are able to touch and feel and say, this is 10,000, this is uh, 5,000, this is 1,000. So you cannot pay for you, you cannot pay five thousand instead of fifty thousand to a visually impaired because they are taking advantage of that fact. No, you may not be in position to. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Girls, any questions so far? Okay, if there are no questions, I move, I then move on. Those are printing. That, those are printing specifically for the visually impaired. And that's the design of the keyboard, of the Braille keyboard. Once they touch the figure, you, they can tell what that, what that figure is. And then, then we have what, we call, what they call the Braille printers. Printers that, printers, actually the Braille printers print this. The Braille printers are responsible for printing this. So that the person, the blind, can simply touch and feel and tell what the printer has output. So when in, even technology puts into account the people who are, disabled people who are who have impairments on their bodies uh, we are right time is against us time is against us but then i'll move a little faster now i have what we call the concept keyboard concept keyboard a volunteer to take us through that. We are rushing. We are rushing against time. Now, good, Jalilian, take us, take control. 
Your mouse is, your microphone is unmuted, yes. The concept keyboard. Yes. This is a flat board that contains a grid of keyboard, of buttons with pictures of items representing what they activate instead of the usual keyboard symbols and characters. Instead of the usual keyboards and instead of the usual commands and characters attached on the keyboard, we shall have a picture. If you want to activate a particular function, the, we shall have the picture of that fun, of that function, just like we have on the sides here. We have these pictures here. If I want to activate a, a, a Adobe Illustrator, I'll press this orange button here. If I want to activate Microsoft Word, I'll press this button here. If I want to activate a email, I'll, I'll press this particular button. So the concept is you press the button that has the image you want, whose, whose application you want to activate. That's why they call it a concept keyboard. You must press, you press a particular button to activate a particular command. And it's further illustrated on our next, in our next slide. Further highlighted here for the concept keyboard are typical for kids. Are typical for the young ones. We have uh, an example here. This keyboard here is the one being used by that little brother of yours you see in that picture. Any questions? Any questions, please? Yes, Queen. Queen. We can't hear you. Hello? Yes, we can now hear you. Charity, ask as Queen tries to sort herself out. Excuse me, teacher. So like on this keyboard which you circled, yes. the one that has diagrams on it does it mean that it's mainly like for games like you can't type using it since it has diagrams now the concept keyboard is tailor-made for say a particular device or if it's a it might be a kid's gaming what uh device it may be a kid's learning device specifically it, it, it the, it's made based on the concept or based on uh role it's going to play based on where it's going it's not for general use like for like a media computer or a media keyboard i hope that has been answered excuse me teacher yes queen you said like on the concept keyboard there is like and like apps of microsoft and microsoft powerpoint cut do those apps come with a keyboard or they just insert them? Those apps come with the keyboard. The apps don't come with the keyboard. Like I've just explained to Charity that these keyboards are tailor-made for a particular computer or for a particular device. Not all keyboards will have such a feature. You get that. So meaning that if yes. by the time that concept keyboard is designed and there is a feature for, Ad, for artificial for Adobe Illustrator, there is a feature for Microsoft Word. It means the app, the device that is going to use that keyboard must have Microsoft Word in it. It must have Adobe Illustrator in it. It must have uh, the, all the typical buttons. For example, here we are in this particular key screen, the keyboard that has been circled. The keyboard that has been circled clearly indicates it's a kid's keyboard. Do you get that? So you cannot carry this keyboard and connect it to your computer and say, I'm going to type a document. This has been tailor-made for a particular device. Daniela, lastly, before I move on. 
Stephanie, could you go to the previous slide so I can screenshot? Daniela wants to see this slide here. Yes, there you are. I'm not even seeing anything. Oh, no, I've seen it. Ask, Thank please. you. You can go to the next. I move to the next. Okay, well understood. Okay. Concept keyboards, those are typical examples. Like I've said, these are not typical uh, general, general keyboards that you go to a shop and buy and say, I'm going to try it on Microsoft Word. These have been made specifically for a particular device. And in most cases, for kids. Do we now better understand through this slide? Girls, does that slide make it easier or better? Okay, concept keys are commonly used among young children by people who would finish using an ordinary key, who would finish, who would find using an ordinary keyboard difficult and in locations where an ordinary keyboard might not be, might be damaged, sorry. Used mainly among children, used by people who would find using an extra an ordinary keyboard difficult and in locations where an ordinary keyboard might not may be damaged. I hope that better is, explains the concept keyboard. Yes. Okay. Then we have what we call the left-handed keyboard. We have what we call the left-handed keyboard. Keyboard meant for people who are left-handed. The keyboard meant for people who are left-handed. What, what's the major difference? The major difference is this. You realize that in our normal keyboards, in our general keyboards, how usually this touch, this num, this numeric keypad is normally on the right. This numeric keypad are normally on the right. And for, for those that are left-handed, the left-handed keyboards, the numeric pad goes to the left. That's why it's called the left-handed keyboard. That's the, the, the meaning of the reason for it being called the left-handed keyboard. I'll move on. Then we have a virtual okay. keyboard. Excuse me, teacher. Ask, please, Charity. So I'm asking, like, why do they put the numeric part on the left? Like, there is, like, no difference. They put the numeric pad on the left because if you're left-handed, it's easier for you to use those the numeric pad that while it's on the left. But in most cases, what they produce are right are on the right hand. So whenever you're making data entry, as far as numbers are concerned, and you're left-handed, it's easier for you to use them from the left-hand side. That's why they also designed what they call the left-handed keyboard. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we have a virtual keyboard, a virtual projection keyboard, a software component that allows one to enter characters into a computer system. An example is a touch screen keyboard on the automated teller machine. Some of us have used uh, um, ATMs and you normally have to touch on the screen. Some of us have gone to payway machines and have paid through using have paid using payway. You tap the screen. That's what we call it. It's a virtual keyboard or a virtual or a projection keyboard. Typical of you on your phone. Let me use an example of your phone. Somebody here is using a tablet. Somebody here is using a tablet. The keyboard is not physical. That's why we call it virtual. You cannot 
lift it up and say this is the keyboard but you're using you're typing and you're making an entry the same applies to somebody the, to this lady up here making an entry that we call it virtual because not it's not a physical keyboard that is applied in day-to-day -day life any question may I please welcome the questions I assume there are no questions. I'll then move on. No, no lack of questions means all is no well. Questions. Then we have the pen input devices. We have the pen input devices. Pen input devices. We have the digital pen. Somebody's trying to drop those those images. Do we see that? Drawing an image that is supposed to be input into the computer. And what are they using? They're using a digital pen. They are digitizing what they are drawing. They are directly yes. digitizing what they have in their head into the computer system. Then we have uh, the stylus, which we well explained. The light pen was also well explained. And the typical application of the stylus and the and the touchpad and the light pen, sorry, are these. We have our stylus here. This person is utilizing a stylus, and the other is using a light pen. The light pen is directly at, connected to the device itself. That's why you see this cable running to the back so when i'm making a signature i'll enter the signature and it will automatically be detected within the system so this person is trying to make an entry using the light pen and then this one is using the stylus because it's a small screen like i said we all have big fingers that will probably touch four different buttons all two at the same time so for it for us to easily make an entry into, into a small screen, then we use what we call a stylus. Uh, time is against us. Uh, let me use this time to respond to questions. I'll use this time to respond to questions. Any questions, girls? Thanks, teacher. Ask Charity. Charity, I'm here. I'm, we are yes, excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. Um, so like the stylus, does it have ink that it uses? There is no ink as such. A stylus is simply. So I'm asking the stylus. Yes. That it uses or like, is it charged? The stylus is simply like any pointing yeah. device, simply to help you point, yeah. but it has no, it has no special feature in it that really makes it unique. I, I hope that may, may, makes sense. So, so it, it, so it's not used for typing, it's just for pointing. For pointing, because you're now selecting a character by character. For example, what that guy is doing is that his point is selecting character by character, but not writing. I hope that answers the question. You point to a character yes, and it's selected. Point to the next and it's selected. Actually, he's 
typing using a, a stylus, but using uh, at the same time apl applying a virtual keyboard on that screen. So you point uh, character by character Thelma. Teacher, I would say that uh, Cyrus is used for like pointing a character by character. Yes. But I also have it, mm. but it can also be used for typing. Typing? But yes. remember, this is a pointing device. It's not a keyboard. There's, why we are saying why we are saying it's used for typing because it's supposed just like I use my hands to press a button on a keyboard doesn't mean that my hand is the one typing. I'm actually using the keyboard to type. So this okay. this this stylus will help me select a character from that virtual keyboard. Look at okay. That. Okay. Yes. Okay, girls, unless there is any other burning question. Unless there is any other burning question. I want Excuse to invite me. a volunteer to help us close the lesson. If there is any other burning question, Achen Naomi. We joined to ask if the work we have done today is going to be in the Google Classrooms. Yes, this lesson is going to be posted in Google Classroom. The video of this lesson is going to be posted in Google Classroom, and I'll later on share the, less, the slides as well. I'll also share the PowerPoint as well. Okay. At the same time, give us a closing prayer, Naomi. Okay, humble yourselves. Thank you, dear Lord, for this day. We thank you for the lesson we have had. We pray that you may keep the knowledge that we have learned today in our heads, and may we go through the other lessons we will in Jesus Christ name of Amen. Thank you very much. Uh